So you want to be a better smite player, huh? Well, you came to the right place. Today, let's talk about how to be a better smite player. I'm going to give you five things that I think can improve your game dramatically if you go ahead and practice them. Because, of course, if you just listen to what I'm saying and it goes in one ear and out the other, it's not going to be very useful, helpful, but it will be entertaining. So if you want to do that, please feel free to go ahead. Now, this list is not in order, so just make sure that all of these points are equally valid and will serve you in becoming a better player no matter what. Now, the first way to become a better smite player is to log every death you have and find out why you died. This is really important and a lot of people and especially beginners just die and die and die and don't think why, why, why? Why did I die? What did I do wrong? Where was I positioned? Where was my team relative to me? What was the enemy team doing? This will give you so much information if you're able to look at it with a keen eye rather than just getting frustrated that you didn't get a kill or that you died again or the third time in a row. You see, if you pause and look at why you died, died, then you can avoid being in that situation in the future. It's simple. It's like if you go into a restaurant every week, and every week you get food poisoning and you order the same dish. Why don't you mix the dish up, bro? Find something else in the restaurant and see if that makes you sick. If it does, why don't you not eat in that restaurant anymore? It's the same thing. If you keep going in 1v5, you might keep dying, and if you do, you gotta think that this may not be the best strategy. Listen, if you wanna stay a good player, then you're just gonna say, okay, sometimes I die, sometimes I don't die, and that's just it. I'll take the dice roll. But if you're a great player or want to be better, that means you have to look at why you died and learn from that. And this is a real key that I think a lot of people don't do yet, and I want to encourage you to do to become a better player overall. Now, I was a D1 collegiate soccer player, and I was drafted to the MLS, and I have to tell you, this will help no matter what situation you're in. Because even as a soccer player now, if I lose the ball or if someone takes it from me, I don't think that's a win for them and a loss for me. I just kind of look at it as what did I do to create that situation so that I can alter it in the future to give myself better odds at succeeding. Now, another way you can become a better smite player is to avoid memorizing builds and to build towards your opponent or the situation. Okay, so let's say I give you a god guide and a build, and then you go ahead and use that build in your next arena match and you proceed with joy. Then you go ahead and get annihilated so terribly you want to call your mother and quit smite altogether. Now the thing is, that's not necessarily what happened. What happened could have been you stayed with a strict build, the team built around you, and you needed to adjust the build, but you didn't. Now let's say I have you starting with the rank 2 of Voidstone at the beginning of the game. But all of a sudden, you notice that a lot of their physical damage dealers, including, let's say, Apollo or Bologna, are all up on your ass. So they basically are taking you out without any issue. All of a sudden, you curse the build and say, this doesn't work, I'm 0-7, let me F6. But the problem is, you didn't notice that in the first death, you were getting focused by Apollo and Bologna. That's why whenever I die, I always look at who killed me, who do I need to build against, because if they keep doing that, they're going to have a field day. Now, one way you could do this is to build a physical defense item instead of Voidstone first, so that you have that physical defense and allows you to survive longer against the heavy pressure from the physical damage gods. Then, at that point, you can understand whether the magical damage gods are getting the best of you, or if you're still getting more of your focus from the physical damage gods, and you can adjust your build further. Maybe Voidstone doesn't even come into play in this build because of the fact that you're being so heavily focused by a physical damage-based team that you need to build Witch Blade and Hide of the Dominion Lion, etc., etc. Oh, well, uh, Rain Day. When should I build towards enemies and when should I just continue my own build? Oh, <laughs> Mickey, I'm glad you asked. The real way I discern between whether to build my own build or to build against an opponent is if I'm up. Think of it as if you're winning the game, you're doing really well, continue with your build as planned. Now, if you're losing the game, that's when you need to make adjustments. So, if that's the case, start looking at what your enemies are building and building around that, or building around the pressure you're receiving based on what role you're in. Great. And now to the third way of how you can become a better smite player. Never surrender. This may be like, ah, you're asking me to kill my first child. No. And if I was doing that, I wouldn't be so public about it. Come on, I'd send you a letter or something. The reason this is such a big rule for me is because this is the holy grail. This is this is entering into Smog's chamber and seeing all the treasure in the Dwarven Kingdom. This is everything to becoming and achieving those amazing lessons that make you a better Smite player. When the going gets tough, 
I have seen more and more consistently in Smite and MOBAs that people just give up. Have we lost our competitive spirit, guys? Can we not learn something from getting our asses kicked? I know that that's how you most learn in these games and in matches. When I would lose a soccer game or if I lose a Smite game, I get so upset that I want to be better. It drives me to be better. But the thing is, if you know that you're never going to surrender, in those moments when you want to, it forces you to think differently. It forces you to look at options on how you could possibly somehow win, and that is what makes you better. You start thinking analytically. You start looking at the enemy team. You start analyzing your team play, whether you need to group up, whether you guys are getting caught one by one, and it makes you think about the game. You become a tactician, which is how you become better at Smite, and you really, really focus down. And let me tell you, when you do that, and the occasional time when you can ban your brothers together on your team to fight against the enemy team and achieve an unlikely victory, you feel great. And you give yourself a lot more power. You make it seem like, hey, if I really want to buckle down, I can win any game and I can get any team of mine to kind of go the distance with me, even if there are insurmountable odds. So to me, I have an immense amount of respect for people who on the opposing team or on my team decide to band together and not surrender. That's why in Rainstorm, it's so cool because when people join the clan, they know we don't surrender. I've never surrendered a game playing with my Rainstorm clan mates. And that's just because they understand this mentality so well that every game is a learning experience for them. If they don't do well on a certain god, they know that. And we talk about it after game. That's one of the great things about being in a clan is that you kind of can set up the culture that you want to operate by. If people start raging, we say, hey, that's not kind of how we do it. Let's bring it back in line. I know you had good intentions, but let's communicate those intentions in another way. All in all, if you never surrender, you open yourself up to miracles and great things that could happen. And you force yourself to play in difficult situations, which eventually will make you a much better player and much more equipped to handle harsh situations in the future. Now, the fourth way you could become a better smite player is to master one god in each of the classes. For instance, a warrior, a mage, a guardian, an assassin, and a hunter, indubitably. Oh yeah, more characters for me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I laugh every time I hear that voice. Oh my god. But really guys, seriously, it's really about variety. If you can go ahead and provide an honest and good role of a guardian, a mage, a hunter, an assassin, and a warrior to your team, you are going to be such a better player than if you are a one-trick pony. I mean, honestly, if you can only hunt or mage, I mean, everyone can hunt and mage. That's 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 like the entire Smite community. But really, if you can warrior, if you can guardian, and you can assassin as well, that means you're such a better asset for your team at any point in time. And that means that you are a better player overall. So, what I'm saying is not to get good at every single god in every single class. I'm trying to say that just learn one. Get good with one guardian. Maybe it's Ares. And maybe find one warrior you're really good with. Maybe it's Bologna, maybe it's Tyr, and then also find a mage and a hunter and an assassin. Of course, if those are your favorite classes, you can be better with more characters, but what I'm saying is have a go-to character that if you get selected for a role that maybe isn't your premier or best role, you at least know the mechanics and how to play that god. There's nothing more frustrating than finally being able to play that hunter role or that assassin role you've been wanting to all night, only to find out that your guardian doesn't even know how to use that guardian. I mean, doesn't even know the abilities, like what they do. That's like getting a reservation at a famous New York steakhouse, only to find out that they're only serving tofu that night. Screw you, restaurant. Screw you. Don't be that restaurant, and don't be that smite player. Come on, learn one of each role. You will be a better player overall. Trust me. Now, the fifth way to be a better smite player is to stay positive. Now, this means so much to me, and it means so much to my clan at Rainstorm and my YouTube at Rain Day Gaming, but I want more people to really understand the value that positivity brings to smite. I mean, we are at a precipice here, guys. We have an opportunity to make smite 
a better place for gamers around the world to come and play. We want this game to be popular. We want it to surpass all other MOBAs around. And to do that, we have to make a place that feels comfortable and enjoyable for everyone to play. And it starts with me and it starts with you by making your clan, your party, a better place to play and treating other clans and other parties and other individual players with the respect that you want to be given when you play the game. I'm talking to the man in the mirror. Uh. I'm asking him to change his ways. Damn, you're good, Rain Day. Great job. Hey, thanks, Rain Day. I appreciate it. Take care, buddy. Those are the kind of conversations and solo performances that make Smite a better place to play. Not calling someone's mother fat or saying you'll meet them in the park after dark to take them down to Chinatown. I could do a whole video on why raging is really bad for Smite, not only community-wise, but financially for its system and its professional players. But I will go and do that for another video. This video, I want to just sum up that positivity breeds positivity. Toxicity breeds toxicity. So if you want to choose one or the other, I would definitely choose to support a positive gaming community in Smite rather than one that feels a little bit abrasive and hard to join and feel happy in. Let's go ahead and make this the best community we can because we have the power to do it. The only way not to be a better Smite player is to not play Smite. And unfortunately, in a toxic environment, that's what happens. People pull out of the game and they stop wanting to be involved. If you are a positive player, you're going to attract positive people. You're going to attract a positive environment and clan. And really, you're going to set yourself up for a more comfortable situation to fail and have it be okay. To still have that support and not have someone saying you should uninstall the game. It takes making mistakes to succeed in the long run. And if you have a supportive community that helps you to make those mistakes and still feel good about yourself, then you're going to be a better Smite player. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. That's going to be it for this top five. Let me know what you liked about it in the comments section below. And also let me know if you have any other additions you'd like to make to this list to help players who want to become better at Smite kind of get a leg up in doing so. I look forward to reading and replying to all of your comments in the comments section below. And as always, guys, subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more top fives and other content here at Rain Day Gaming. As always, never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you guys next time.